my name is uh, Richard Hill, and uh, this is my family tree DNA story. Well, as an adoptee, I had been searching for information on my birth parents for a long time, and I, I found the identity of my mother um, 26 years earlier. Uh, she had been killed a year after I was born, as it turns out, so I was too late to meet her. Uh, and she had named someone who was supposedly the father in the uh, secret records that were uh, uh, unavailable to me for many years. I finally did get into those records, but the ter it turns out the person that she named um, was not my father. We proved it through conventional uh, paternity testing uh, way back in the 90s. So I kind of reached a dead end. And I had a friend who happened to mention to me one night when we were with him that uh, he was getting his DNA tested through Family Tree DNA to uh, help him with his genealogy. And so I asked, well, how does that work? And he kind of explained it to me. And I thought, hmm, you know, this could very well work for me because I don't know who my father is. And it seems like my father and I should share some uh, common markers on the, the Y chromosome. So, uh, um, so I decided to... Uh, to order a test and, uh, and see what I got. Well, initially I only picked 12 markers because I wasn't sure this was going to work. And my initial results were that I got about 50 matches and it kept climbing as more samples, you know, more people were tested. Now I think I've got like 65 or something. And, and that proved to be by itself not, not enough because, uh, uh, you know, I have 50 people with 50 different surnames. so. Uh, <laughs> You know, it turned out it, it wasn't enough, and by talking to some of them through email, um, I learned that I, the answer really was to get more markers tested. So I ordered a 37 marker test and just waited for the results. And the big surprise for me came that I did get, at the 25 marker level, one perfect match. And it was from a, a man who had only tested 25 markers, so we don't know what, how the next 12, you know, look. But, uh, uh, so, you know, we had both signed the permission slip, so I contacted him through email to see if, uh, you know, he might have, uh, his family might go back somewhere into Michigan, uh, where I was uh, conceived and, and born. Uh, he was in Florida, and his family, as far as he knew, had never been in Michigan, and he traced him back into the uh, late 1700s in North Carolina. I thought, well, let's go back through my notes. Again, this is many years after I had done most of my work. I had done most of my work 20-some uh, years before. And uh, I would fortunately taken a lot of notes. And I went back through my notes, uh, knowing, knowing this particular surname, I went back to see if I had anybody from that, with that same surname had been associated with my mother way back in the 40s. And as it turns out, uh, the man who she worked for, uh, she worked as a waitress in a bar on weekends, and the man who owned the bar had the same surname as the guy matched in Florida. And also I had heard that she had actually gone out with him a couple of times. So I had that anecdotal information to tie with the, uh, the DNA testing. Well, then this has of course been in the 1940s, so I tried to find out what happened to him. I figured if he was he was supposedly a man in his 30s at that time, and, and this is, you know, 60 years later. So I figured he's probably not alive, but I want to find out what happened to his descendants. And so through a couple more months of research, I tracked down a niece of his who still lives in Michigan. And she was the one that then, um, when I explained the story, she was incredibly helpful, very open to, the, to discussing it with me, shared information on uh, uh, this man and, and his family. Um, and it turns out that he had um, four brothers who were also in Michigan that same summer. So even though she, my mother didn't have any direct connection with him, I mean, you know, she did work at uh, their brother's bar, uh, and they were in the same, in the Detroit area. So, you know, it's possible she could have met any of them. And the way the, the Y DNA genealogy test works is uh, even if I tested those people, they'd probably all match because uh, we'd all be in the same line. So uh, I ended up contacting a son of each of those men because all the men were dead. 
and I and I found out about another type of DNA testing, uh, which I had to do elsewhere, that was called uh, sibling testing or kinship testing, uh, and uh, I got them all to submit samples, and uh, and they compared us to see what how much commonality we had in our in our markers, because one of them would be a half brother to me, and the rest would be cousins, and uh, just to kind of make a long story short, it did turn out that the son of the man who owned the bar where my mother worked, he did come up showing a strong match with me, stronger than all of the, uh, his cousins. So that's where I concluded that uh, even though you can't actually prove anything through that type of testing, uh, just the probabilities are so high when you add in everything else. Plus then once I found the family, I found out what genealogy information they had and I added, started working to add to that, doing my own research. And I managed to trace that family back. Most of them were in Texas and still are in Texas. And I was able to trace that family back through Alabama to Georgia and into North Carolina. And it turns out that my ancestor in Franklin County, North Carolina, lived right practically next door to my DNA match in Florida to his ancestor in Franklin County, North Carolina. I was certainly thrilled because this had been a, you know, a lifetime search for me. I mean, this whole search had been going on for 26 years. Um, so uh, I was uh, extremely thrilled, relieved to find it over with, and just satisfied that a, that a lot of hard work and detective work over the years had, had paid, out, paid off. And of course, I was ex extremely thankful that DNA testing had evolved to the point where it could be the missing link to, to piece all this together because uh, I had a lot of pieces of this puzzle that had to come together and, uh, and the final uh, result would have never come about without the, uh, the DNA testing.